this conversation, the topic of women and ambition, came out of a discussion about the lack of women in leadership roles. And so the question is, how are ambitions born? What, in fact, potentially undermines them? And what can we do from a business perspective in our own organizations to really foster and cultivate women's dreams? 37% of men look out, see men there, say, oh, I could do that, here I am. But the other part is that the same number of women look out and see that there aren't men there, and they don't run unless somebody encourages them. And what we saw was that men were much more overconfident than women. Right. Fact, Everyone's shocked, we <laughs> said. That's a shocking finding. But, but you might be shocked by how extreme it was. Among the men, 75% of the men thought they were best. Okay. And that's despite the fact that you know, it should have been 25%. Two big costs here. One is that high-performing women are not entering into the tournament in high enough numbers, but the other bad outcome is low-performing men are opting in too much. <laughs> when you look at our young associates, it's a very interesting thing. Most of them don't want to be a partner. Um, that's one of the big issues we're seeing in the law firm is that neither men nor women want to do what we did to, to get to where we are. So we're um, spending a lot of time in trying to figure out how to motivate everybody to stick around for what is um, very much a slog. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the catalyst studies of the uh, Fortune 500 companies that have the most women in leadership has shown that their uh, return on investment is 35% higher. You know, being wanting dominance as your, is not necessarily the key to economic success or any other success. A lot of our attention will be focused very much on how, what women can do for themselves in terms of stoking up their own ambitions and finding the kinds of reinforcement that they need and the kind of support. But frankly, my biggest concern is that there is enormous need for institutional change. And if women of power and capability abandon the ship in their middle 30s, there's no one there who really understands what kind of change needs to happen. For PwC, this is clearly a business imperative. We need women to want to be leaders to choose to be leaders, to step up to the tournament of leadership, if you will, which is partnership, for the sustainability of our business. And I know that that is true for all of you as well.